Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple. That's your no shit gaming news video. Three news stories in one video with zero faff. The legacy of No Man's Sky is unlike anything else in gaming. It had one of the worst launches imaginable as it was missing multiple features that were promised by the over-enthusiastic Sean Murray. Come on, Murray. Now, four years on from its launch, the game is virtually unrecognizable from how far it's come. Games as a service get criticized often for being hollow, incomplete garbage, but No Man's Sky is one of the very few shining examples of how it can be done right. After being heavily updated post-launch, all for free I might add, the game is getting yet another hefty update called Origins. This 3.0 update, which is live right now, adds loads of new features including new planets to explore, binary stars like those seen orbiting Tatooine, a new user interface, and much, much more. The full patch notes are linked in the description if you want to see everything in more detail. No Man's Sky is all about exploring outer space and different planets, so more new worlds have been added to most star systems with more varied terrain without disrupting the existing ones or destroying any user-built structures. In addition to brand new planets, the visuals of these planets have been improved in terms of rendering rendering quality, color diversity, lighting diversity, and flora diversity, as well as scorched planets becoming volcanically active or lush planets turning into swamps. As well as new flora, the fauna of these planets is also expanding to include new exotic creatures and even cybernetic life forms on top of behavior and animation improvements across the board. But the biggest change to the wildlife of No Man's Sky is that colossal sandworms now burrow beneath your feet just like those seen in Dune or Beetlejuice. Cloud rendering has been improved, cloud formations now match the atmospheric conditions seen from orbit and cloud coverage now varies more and is affected by storms. But storms aren't the only weather changes, as shooting stars and meteor showers now occur, lightning will strike during storms, and tornadoes and firestorms can even happen. Additional stars are being added to several star systems to create a binary system, as well as making some systems ternary systems, which means they'll have three stars. The game's UI and photo mode have both had massive overhauls, as well as 43 additional fixes on top. Now I've glossed over a lot of what was included in this update, and there's still a lot more in there, so I encourage you to read the full patch notes for yourself. The update launches for PS4, Xbox One, and PC today, and the game is also available on Game Pass. Developer Hello Games launched the major No Man's Sky updates next in 2018 and beyond in 2019, and Origin builds on all that great work. It may be coming four years after the original launch day, but now the game has fulfilled much of what was first promised and gone even further beyond that. And the fact that all of this was done completely for free when all the other classic AAA villains would charge the price of a whole new game is truly astounding and should always be applauded. We don't talk about the successes in the games industry often enough, and while I'm not a No Man's Sky player myself, it's really great to see how far the game has risen and gone from strength to strength. Every games as a service, from Anthem to Avengers to Destiny, could learn a thing or two from Hello Games in how to just knuckle down and get the job done. And up next is a sort of follow-up to yesterday's stories with Spider-Man. Sony has now officially confirmed that owners of the current Spider-Man game on PS4 will not get a free upgrade to the remastered PS5 version. According to a statement supplied to Kotaku, Sony said, Marvel Spider-Man Remastered is an enhanced version of Marvel Spider-Man and is included as part of Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition for the PlayStation 5. In addition, players who purchase Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales on PS4 can upgrade at no additional cost to the PS5 version of Marvel Spider-Man Spider-Man Miles Morales, and can take advantage of a paid upgrade to download Marvel Spider-Man Remastered. That's a pretty long-winded way of saying if you get Spider-Man Miles Morales on PS4, you can upgrade for free to the PS5 version, which is great news and is something more and more companies are getting behind. However, if you already own the 2018 original, you will not get a free upgrade to the remaster. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Sony's statement continued, There are no plans currently to offer Marvel Spider-Man Remastered as a standalone. Players with a copy of Marvel Spider-Man for PS4 can purchase Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition to experience Marvel Spider-Man Remastered on PS5. Marvel Spider-Man for PS4 will also be backwards compatible on PS5. I've read the word Spider-Man so many times, it doesn't even sound like a real word anymore. This is all stuff that I touched on yesterday, but now it is officially confirmed that the only way to get the Spider-Man Remaster is to buy Miles Morales on PS5. You cannot buy it individually, and you will not get a free upgrade if you already own it. I said yesterday that I didn't understand why PS4 users wouldn't get the remaster of the original game, but I didn't really make myself clear because, well, I'm just a bit of a dumbass and... You already knew. 
The remaster isn't just a visual overhaul, it also includes new Spider-Man suits, new photo mode features, new trophies, and all three episodes of the City That Never Sleeps DLC. There's no reason that the new stuff can't be made available on PS4. Perhaps this new content like skins and trophies will be added as part of an update, but that hasn't been confirmed. Altogether, this is a really obfuscating way to make people buy the Ultimate Edition of Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is £17 more here in the UK and $20 more in the US. The problem is that so many other companies are offering free upgrades on their games, even Ubisoft is doing it with Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion. There's this handy chart on Push Square which lists all the PS4 games which get a free upgrade to PS5 if you want to take a look for yourself. Sony is an enormous company and making the upgrade free for people who already bought the damn game is the right thing to do. And finally, moving from something bad Sony is doing to something good Microsoft is doing. I've always been a staunch defender of physical games media as a collector, but also as a way of definitively owning the games you buy. But one thing digital gaming has over physical discs is how convenient it is, and on top of that, more and more games allow purchasers to preload so that you don't have to sit through lengthy updates and installs. Microsoft is now allowing preloading for even physical game launches, meaning that you'll be able to jump right into the action as soon as you put the disc in. Any physical or digital game can now be preloaded and will only launch when you prove your purchase, i.e. by putting the disc in. To use this feature, you'll need to download the Xbox app for Android, but it doesn't look like there's an iOS equivalent just yet. This is something I've been waiting a long time for because I always prefer physical media, but the convenience of digital downloads can't be understated. Now, as soon as you buy a physical game, you can just log it with an app, get it pre-downloaded, and jump in as soon as your game arrives and just get straight to the action, which is clearly the way it should be. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this no shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost, hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future installments. Toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. I've been Henry Cooper. That's all for today. Bye for now.